a French physician that was named Alfred Tomatis. And uh, he was called into a monastery where uh, the monks were all just, they had dropped lifelessly in their, in their rooms. They, they thought it was some kind of horrid disease. They did not know what was wrong with these monks. So they called this, uh, this physician in to see if they could figure out what the problem was. They had called other physicians in, and none of them had been able to evaluate the situation. He came in, and uh, after some, uh, some studying of the monks and talking with them, he came to the officials there and said, I know what the problem is. There was a new, um, there was a new head uh, uh, that had come into this monastery and kind of looked over everything that was taking place and decided, okay, I think the monks don't need to do their chanting anymore. I think it's a waste of time. They can chant when they go to service, but as far as their daily round, I think they need to use their energies for more progressive things. So he had the monks to stop their, you know, the beautiful, the beautiful songs that they sang and the and the Gregorian chants and the and the just it was so beautiful and they would they would sing as they went all day long they would be singing well for some weeks now they had stopped their singing and he walked in this French physician did he walked in and after studying them said the problem is that their music has died therefore there's many things that have shut down inside them so if you will allow them to begin their chanting again, they will be well very quickly. Well, they decided, okay, we can't figure out what else is wrong. So they started their chanting again. And it took them about two months. But after about two months, they were completely normal again. They had all of their capacities back and their energy had returned. That's how powerful the music was in their lives. And believe it or not, it's as powerful in your life. If you have days that you feel like you are just so completely drained that you can hardly get up and you can hardly go and do what you have to do, if you can find music that really speaks to your heart and play music during the day, you'll find that it will absolutely give you energy. So the first thing that you need to do, if this is not present in your life, is you need to choose two endeavors. You, of all the things that we've talked about today, you need to think of two things that if you could do those two things, it would make your life really special, more invigorating, more wonderful than it's been in the past. Pick two things and just write them down when you get home on a piece of paper. Then write down the new goals that go with those two things, what you would like to do. Mark Twain said that 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. Write your two new endeavors down and then make goals. For example, this is what I mean. Let's just say that you have a book inside you and you want to write a book. Write down that as a goal and then underneath it put, okay, every day I'm going to uh, write one page a day. Or every day I'm going to write for one hour a day. Or every day I'm going to write one story. And sit down and write that one story. And, and find you a place and start compiling them. Then the next goal in that same category might be uh, at the end of three months, I'm going to start editing my work. Um, the next thing might be, uh, okay, I'm going to start looking for a publisher in anticipation of when I finish this book. Because if you do it every day, it will happen. And oh my goodness, what an awesome thing it would be if that's what you want to do, if that would be one of your endeavors. <clears throat> Write down the goals that go with your endeavors. Then share your new goals with someone you know you can trust to believe in you. Steer clear of naysayers. You know what? If you come up to me, it doesn't matter what you say to me. If you come up to me and you say, Rita, I have decided that I'm going to write a book on ballet. <laughs> you know what I'm probably going to say? I'm probably going to say, well, that is great. Tell me how you came about thinking this. Tell me what are your plans to do it. Well, have you had ballet in the past? And what I would start doing is immediately start brainstorming with you of how you can 
do that book or how you would make the book more interesting or better or whatever you want to say about it because I would be one of your people that would be encouraging. But you know what? If you went up to some people in your life, in the neighborhood, in the community and said, you know, I've decided to do a book, write a book on ballet. You know what you would get from some of them? Bless. You're going to do what? Are you kidding? <laughs> That's the naysayers. That's the ones that I want you to steer away from. Do you know how old Colonel Sanders was when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken? He was 65. When he started the company. And look how it's impacted our world. He was 65 when he started. And the only reason he started it was because he retired. Didn't have anything to do anymore. Don't listen to the voices of past failures. Whatever you do, if they're voices in your head, if they're voices from the outside, don't listen to voices of past failures. The greatest thing in this world is not so much where we are, but in what direction we're moving. Look for opportunities to celebrate small accomplishments. If you're writing that book and you say, okay, every 25 pages I'm going to have a celebration. I'm going to invite three friends in and I'm going to say, this is my book celebration. And we're going to talk about it and we're going to see what everybody else is doing. I am all up for a celebration. I look for ways to celebrate. I look for ways to recognize and encourage people because that's what life's all about. The fruit of our labor is worth far more than the pay. See, every setback is just another bit of wisdom gained, and we've already talked about that. Adjust your sails and keep sailing. We can't direct the wind, but we can adjust our sails. After you reach one of your two new goals, celebrate, have a party, invite guests, Share your new success with the others, and then choose another new goal to put in its place. Never let life catch you without two goals on the horizon. And they can be small. They can be just to raise a, a wonderful tomato plant on the patio. Whatever you want to do that is something that is outside of your regular daily round can be a goal for you. Don't, don't ever let life catch you without two of those that are in progress. More if you can handle it, but at least two of them that are in progress. Include music and poetry every day of your life. Do something that has to do. See, you've already got the music done today because whether you know it or not, there was music playing while we've been in here. During the break and when you first came in. Include music and poetry every day of your life. Michelangelo's favorite saying was, I'm still learning. And look how he impacted the world. 